From fancy flip phones to modular puzzle pieces to screens that bend and flex, Motorola has always built devices that are exciting to talk about. And over the last few years, they've also been known for affordable and reliable favorites. But what's next? Well, Motorola, like many other brands this year, wants to be seen as a leader in the premium flagship space. So this year, after a long break from making high-end phones, they're back with a contender. Build with plenty of superlatives, highest resolution imagery, fastest 5G speeds, fastest processor, most immersive wraparound display, most powerful speakers, and largest battery. Motorola believes the new Moto Edge Plus has got everything it takes to dominate and is everything you want and need. But does this phone live up to those claims? Does it have something special enough to make you want to go out and buy it? And is it your gadget match? Hi, I'm Michael Josh on what now feels like almost a lifetime in quarantine. While stores are closed and the world seemingly on pause, the tech world pushes forward. On May 14th, the Motorola Edge Plus, Motorola's latest flagship, goes on sale here in the US. Yet another thousand dollar phone to join the mix of premium phones to pick from. I've reviewed at least eight of them in the last two months alone, and as the field gets wider, the tougher it is for phones to stand out. In this video, we'll try to find out if Motorola has done enough with the Edge Plus to break through the noise. And as always, your questions help shape how this review is put together. If you like long, in-depth gadget reviews, then consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. We put a lot of hard work into each video. We pour a lot of our blood, sweat, and tears to make sure that you leave not just entertained, but with insights. So please hit that bell notification to make Make sure that you get notified as soon as we post new videos. It took five long years for us to get to 500k and with your help, we'd love to get to that next milestone this year. Let's start with a quick unboxing. It's very simple packaging actually, just a black box with the Edge Plus branding in metallics. Inside sits the phone. Next is the documentation packet with a little paperclip-esque SIM tray ejector. And last but not the least, a black charging brick that says Turbo Power, accompanied by a USB-C to A charging cable. Okay, on to the review, and let's dive straight into the display discussion. After all, if its name is any indication, this is supposed to be the phone's standout feature. But is it? Aesthetically, this endless display is rather eye-catching, and I know we've seen curved displays before, but this one goes further, I'd say almost halfway down its sides, where usually you'd be greeted by a phone's frame. Only Xiaomi's Mix Alpha prototype wraps around the phone further, but that phone is not commercially available yet. You've probably heard from me and many other reviewers about the cons of a curved display. That's just the nature of the beast. When a touchscreen extends to the parts where you'd normally hold a phone, accidental taps are inevitable. I will admit that during my time with the phone, it wasn't that much of a problem for me. And I think that boils down to how I hold phones in general. I know they were a big problem for my friend Michael Fisher, and to his credit, it's easy to mess things up with a light squeeze. Now, because experience varies from person to person, this is the kind of phone that it's probably better if you go out to a store to feel and try before you buy. It's an interesting choice by Motorola to cast its bets on an idea that is quite divisive and isn't necessarily new. Pioneered by Samsung six years ago, curved displays have since been abandoned by the South Korean tech giant, but lives on in this season's grades by Oppo, Xiaomi, Huawei, and OnePlus. The only difference here is that Motorola pushed those curved edges even further. Vidris asks, does the edge screen offer any real value or is it purely aesthetic? A question that I've asked myself over and over for many years, and the answer has always been the same. I think it's more design than function. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially if you get a sexy and futuristic looking phone. Of course, you don't want it to come at the expense of the experience. Motorola will argue they've built in software functionality to address this. But how helpful are these tools actually? 
Let's give it a look. One feature is called edge lights that illuminate the sides of the phone when you receive a phone call, get an app notification, or when you're charging. The pattern changes depending on the notification type, and by default, will show up whether the phone is face up or face down. If I wasn't quarantined right now, I'd probably be out with friends, and there I can think of a practical use for this feature. When I'm dining out, I always follow the phone face down on table rule, but of course, there's one big problem. If it's on mute, then you might miss an important phone call. If I were using the Edge Plus, I would turn the light off for app notifications. That way, the only time it would light up is if the phone is ringing. It needs to be noted, other phones with Edge screens have this feature too, and Motorola doesn't allow you to customize color like Samsung or OnePlus does. But I will say, the feature works much better on a screen like this. I guess that said, if you're going to curve your screen, might as well do it all the way. Another feature is called Edge Touch. It works via this floating action bar over here. You can swipe up and down to control the notification shade and app drawer, and swipe in to summon this tool with shortcuts. Again, something that we've seen before. That said, I think what it's really for is turning the edge screen off entirely. Just double tap on it while in an app to make the edge screen go away. This is extremely helpful when you're on an app like Instagram or YouTube that have elements you need to reach for on the far edge of the screen. It will, however, not work on the home screen and not on the camera app. The latter would have been nice. I personally don't like the fact that part of my viewfinder are on the curved parts of the screen. It's not really helpful when you're composing a shot and part of the scene is partially obstructed. All of these features are part of Motorola's suite of useful add-ons that gives its vanilla Android experience some spice. And Motorola has long been known for this. Way back in 2013, the Moto X was the first device with active listening. Back then, no other phone would respond if you said, just Alonzo asks, are the gestures still there? They sure are. Mainstay favorites like Slice to turn on the flashlight and Flick to launch the camera are still there and very useful. Or how about tap with three fingers to screenshot? Peak Display, on the other hand, lets you peek at notifications even when the display is off. Now, that's great if you're home, but my biggest problem with that is that anyone can peek and read your messages without unlocking your phone. I like how the iPhone does it. Notifications won't expand unless it recognizes your face. Now, while all of these features are much beloved, I think it needs to be pointed out that there's nothing particularly new about them, nothing fresh. Now, that's not a complaint, merely a challenge. Just thought I'd put it out there. One more thing to add to my wish list. Would have been nice to get a built-in screen recorder like on many Android phones these days. And speaking of Android, the Edge Plus runs on Android 10, and Motorola is committing to at least two Android OS upgrades, which is pretty standard in the Android world, but not impressive. On paper, the selling point of the Moto Edge Plus's camera is its 108 megapixel sensor. But as we've seen in reviews of other 108 megapixel phones, more megapixels doesn't always equate to the best photos. Like on many high-resolution phones, pixel binning is involved. In the case of the Edge Plus, four pixels are combined into one, producing a 27 megapixel image. Let's take a look at some samples. Many of you guys asked how its cameras stack up versus the OnePlus 8 Pro. So I did one better and shot some comparison photos versus the Pixel 4 XL, the Galaxy S20 Ultra, the OnePlus 8 Pro, even the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And as you can see from these examples, during the day, the Edge Plus does a decent job of keeping up. Most of the time, I wouldn't say the Edge Plus shot the best photo, except in one extreme HDR scenario where it did the best job of lighting the subject also. The Edge Plus has night mode on both its front and rear cameras, and for the most part does a decent job. However, if we're comparing whether it's a scene and especially a person, this is the area where you can really start to see the Edge Plus lag behind. While some manufacturers still make you choose between an ultra wide angle camera and a zoom lens, the Edge Plus gives you both. There's also a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that doubles as a macro lens. This camera isn't as wide as some of its competitors, but it does the job. 
not as much in low light situations. It also has an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 3x optical zoom. This 3x zoom lens is great for times when you really want to zoom in on your subjects, like these flowers behind a park fence. There's also a time of flight sensor used for measuring depth, which you can use in some photo modes like cutout that replaces your background with something fun or spot color for photos like these. It doesn't always work, but when it does, the results are pretty cool. It's also used for video portrait mode. So this is what video bokeh looks like. Uh, I'm trying not to move because it doesn't really track my face if I move too much, but we're seeing if the flowers keep moving in the background. Is it blurry? Let me know what you think. And while we're talking about cameras, this camera bump is probably one of my biggest complaints about the phone's design. Not because of its size, but because of how wobbly it is when placed on a table. Just look at how it rocks back and forth. I know table wiggle is common on a lot of 2020 flagships, but it's pretty extreme on the Edge Plus. I wish that Motorola shipped a case with this phone because we know we're not going to get a lot of case options for it that would have immediately solved this problem. Speaking of video, you can capture 6K video at 30 frames per second. Motorola says it has the industry's most advanced image stabilization. Now, I don't have the proper gear to give you a fair comparison, so take a look at some video samples instead. Last but not the least, I want to talk about the selfie camera, something that I gloss over or even skip in some of my videos, but really needs to be talked about here. The Edge Plus has a 25 megapixel selfie camera, but the images are also fused together in the same four into one pattern. I actually like selfies on the Edge Plus. Between the focal length of its lens and the way it processes photos, selfies come out looking great, natural, with just a touch of smoothening, which is very important. I also like that there's a ring around the selfie camera so you know where to look. My only complaint is how over-sharpened the preview image looks. To quote my producer Chai, talk about heightening my insecurities. Thankfully, that's just a preview, not the photo. Another headline feature of the Moto Edge Plus is its 5,000 milliamp hour battery, the biggest you can get on a phone today. Moshi asks, how good is it versus the S20 Ultra and the V60? While its battery lasts long, it doesn't last as long as other 5,000 mAh smartphones we've reviewed recently, including the two-day LG V60. You can click over here if you want to see that review. In the entire week and a half that I used the Edge Plus as my daily driver, the phone consistently got me through a full day of average use, which is pretty good, except that Motorola promises two days of battery life, which on this phone is a bit of a stretch. My bigger issue, though, has to do with charging. Like I pointed out in my unboxing, it says turbo power, but charging speeds are slow. You only get 10% in 10 minutes, 29 and 30, 57% after an hour. And a full charge takes more than two and a half hours. And it's not just the charger, it's the phone. The Edge Plus doesn't support any fast charging standard, so no quick charge for. Using a higher watt charger will only give you slightly faster speeds after the 60 minute mark. This is probably protection built into the bundled adapter. The phone supports wireless charging, but the coil is in such an awkward place that it took a lot of effort to get it to work with any of my wireless chargers, making it almost unusable. There's also 5 watt power share for charging your accessories. I like how the sides light up so you know exactly where to place your buds. Moto says the Edge Plus has the loudest output ever versus similarly priced phones, 
tuned by Grammy Award-winning production company Waves. The phone has stereo speakers, one built into the earpiece and the other down here on the bottom. I know I've said many times before that I'm not an audiophile, but recently I've really been taking the time to compare and listen to different phone speakers and headphones so that I can get a better feel of what I like and so that I can give you guys a better recommendation also. Among the phones I've reviewed this year, the best speakers so far have been the OnePlus 8 Pro and my current favorite, the LG V60. While the V60 has more bass and I like that, I'm realizing that I like more neutral mids on an equalizer and punchier bass and treble, the opposite ends of the spectrum. The Edge Plus is equally as loud as the V60, but seems to prioritize vocals, especially those with higher ranges better. There's a level of clarity that's not found on the V60. I think the term for it is brilliant. So I do think these are some of the best speakers on a smartphone today, but that's also because of the type of music that I like to listen to. Finally, there's a headphone jack. There's no built-in DAC support, but it's good to know that if you do feel like plugging in some wired headphones, you can, just not the ones that come in the box, because you don't. The Moto Edge Plus is a Verizon exclusive, supposedly so you can take advantage of their 5G network. But unless you live in a 5G neighborhood, that shouldn't matter, at least not right now. Where I live in New York, unfortunately, there isn't any 5G coverage. Luckily, my buddy Michael Fisher has Verizon 5G down the street from where he lives. So I've asked him to join us today to tell us all about it. Michael, what is 5G like on the Moto Edge Plus? Hey Michael, Josh, thanks for having me. Uh, the Moto Edge Plus review device is already back on its way to Motorola, so I don't have it in my hand now. But it was a surprisingly positive experience for a guy like me who's always pretty down on 5G, particularly the 5G millimeter wave, which I can, I can see a node from my place, but I have to go down the street to use it. What made it positive is that now we're starting to see um, services take advantage of the, the uh, increased speeds. Google Play Store no longer throttles its downloads, so I was able in my video review to get a very large game downloaded in like half the time as it would have taken over LTE. And I'm told that very soon they're gonna start using, and they being Verizon, is going to start using 5G for the uplink as well as the downlink. So people like us who need to upload very large files like YouTube videos on the go, we're gonna start seeing some really cool advantages, finally. And it's about time, isn't it? The phone goes on sale May 14th for $9.99, or just over $41 for two years. Of course, cause it's Verizon, expect plenty of bloatware, at least 15 different apps. It's not a deal breaker, but it's not fun either, so I felt the need to call it out. Before we wrap up, let's dive into some of your questions, rapid fire style. Can it play my favorite games? When it comes to processing power, the Edge Plus will be able to handle anything you throw at it. It is, after all, powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 865 processor. So whether you're racing or are in a head-to-head -head fight, the phone's got your back. Fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint scanner is built into the display and based on my tests, was fast and responsive. Single or dual SIM? Single SIM only, and no provisions for a micro SD card. IP rating. Nope, no official IP rating. Instead, Motorola is calling it a water repellent design. How is haptic feedback? Very good, actually. One of my favorite features of the phone, dare I say, it probably has some of the best haptics on an Android phone today. How slippery is it? Very slippery, actually. When I wake up in the morning and I reach for my phone, I find myself being extra cautious and careful. I don't know what it is about it, whether it's the curves or the texture of its finish, but it is one slippery phone. Is it hard to grip and use single-handed? Nope, it's narrower than the usual phone, which makes it easy to grip. So, is the Moto Edge Plus your gadget match? For a phone that was intended to be Motorola's triumphant return to the premium segment, it's a valiant effort, a good start. The Edge Plus is a well-rounded phone. It's solidly built, performs well across all categories, 
and looks great. The team should be proud. But does it offer anything extra that would convince you to buy it over phones at its price point? I guess that's the most relevant question here. In the US, its $1,000 price tag puts it in the same league as the Galaxy S20. It's $200 cheaper than the S20 Plus and a hundred more than the OnePlus 8 Pro. The reasons I'd get the Edge Plus over these two phones is if I wanted better speaker quality or if its form factor is what you're looking for. But to answer one for all's question, I personally wouldn't spend just for the screen itself. I know it's supposed to be more immersive, but watching YouTube or Netflix on this phone doesn't feel any less immersive than on my iPhone with a flat display. I'd recommend it to those wanting an alternative to Samsung if camera performance isn't most important to you. And let's not forget Moto fans who have been craving for that flagship experience again. That said, I wouldn't say that the Edge Plus has necessarily knocked this one out of the park. I don't think the Edge screen is innovative, at least not in 2020. Perhaps it's enough to make some noise, but not enough to break through it. Its battery, while large, isn't as optimized as well as it could be. Its camera is good, not great, and there are emissions too, like that water resistance rating, which is a standard in its price class. So as we conclude, I want to end this video on a positive note. So let me answer Jim's question, and then bring this home. Is Motorola barking up the wrong tree making a flagship in 2020? Nope, it's a great move, and I hope that they continue doing it. As a team, they've got all the right parts. They just need to get it right. Now, as they go back to the drawing board this year, I hope that they take their learnings from the Razer and the Edge Plus and come up with something amazing. Something with an edge, <laughs> just not literally. And that was our Moto Edge Plus review. If you like videos like this one, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon too, so that you get notified as soon as we post new videos. Follow us on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.